Energy industry big names have been holding discussions at the different fora about the future of the African oil and gas sector. No thanks to a cocktail of global crises, in particular since the pandemic of 2020, the Russian war in Ukraine, and now the Israel-Hamas war. NJ Ayuk, the executive chairman of the African Energy Chamber, has been part of these high-level discussions from the Energy Week last month in South Africa to the Afro-Caribbean Conference in Guyana and the Houston, Texas summit held last week. Ayuk joins me now on the show for insights into the big conversations on the continent's energy future. We thank you for connecting in tonight. Ayuk, as always, we appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Let's start from the Georgetown Guyana's conference. What were the takeaways for you from this Africa Caribbean summit as far as the energy cooperation between the Caribbeans and Africa is concerned? One billion dollars put forward by Afro-Exim Bank in order to develop Afro, um, the Caribbean African trade, but also big the debt billion for the diaspora. So we're no longer going to walk in silos. We are going to walk hand in hand with our Caribbean brothers. And isn't this a coincidence that we, this meeting was held right in Guyana, a country that has just become an oil and gas producer. They could hear from a lot of um, mis uh, narratives coming out of Nigeria, Angola, mistakes that have been made in the past, but also abilities to, to collaborate and drive the future. You had African entrepreneurs, service companies, working hand, hand in hand with their Guyanese and Trinidadian partners to see how we can exchange and then drive growth. This was massive. AfriExim has done something that we've never been able to see by bringing in leadership from Africa and, and the Caribbeans to really put energy forward. And we had a, soft, a strong unified message to go with energy, especially going into COP. The Caribbeans is going to stand hand to hand with Africa. That is great and we're gonna make deals together. Well, in your opinion, uh, NJ, what should be the focus of the U.S. energy sector engagement with Africa and this time if you consider the conversations in Houston, Texas? We were already in the hemisphere. Our partners in the United States so much wanting to get a little bit of the chamber and also see some of the stuff that we're doing. That tells me that the Americans are coming back strong. Africa has had no better partner than U.S. energy companies that in spite of the global um, narrative about oil and gas, Texas, U.S. companies have stayed strong. They continue investing. You've seen a lot of mergers and acquisitions are going on right now between uh, with Exxon and PNR, Chevron and Hess. But, you know, there's a strong commitment from them to keep the African projects going. You're going to see Chevron continue investing offshore Africa. Exxon is going to continue investing in Angola, in Mozambique, in Namibia, and many other African countries, including Nigeria. But it's a strong commitment out of Texas with geological companies driving in seismic, shooting seismic around it so we have data. So you're going to see some really big news very soon on new deals signed by Texas-based companies to drive exploration around Africa. But we also met with the city of Houston. They are the mayor's office, and they had an unflinching commitment to bring the public sector and get Africans voice, especially during this time of a transition. And I think that is all picked up with what we saw um, um, the Assistant Secretary of State voice during the African Energy Week. We are not going to stop our US engagement. We are going to get along with them. Africans and Americans, they like peanut butter and jelly. They get along very well together. Yes, the talk that I look together, you mentioned the African Energy Week, uh, which was held last month uh, in Cape Town. What's the major benefits for the continent's energy industry from here? Summarize the takeaways uh, from that conference one week for me. Person, you were right there. You saw more people than you've ever seen in an energy conference. But even bigger than that, you saw billions of dollars of investment committed to this continent. Billions of dollars committed to Mozambique. They're going to take new LNG projects going forward. Senegal, you just saw on, on today, Cosmos and BP. Cosmos is going to become the operator. 
Cosmos was a big sponsor of Energy Week, and they are going to take that project forward. Nigeria is going to have a lot more developments with Total Energies developing that new 300 by and by a million barrel discoveries. Namibia was a big highlight. You saw the Namibian president was there, the minister, Tom Arwendo, really great guy. They are going to see a lot more development between Kudu Gas, Green Hydrogen, but Total and Shell are going to move forward. You've already seen some of the commitments that we made in, in Africa Energy Week with drilling. They have moved forward, not even up to three weeks. So we're excited by that. South Africa is going to get the upstream bill that is going to um, unleash amazing potential. And we're going to see more devo energy development that is going to create human flourishing human flourishing and drive an african civilization that we can make energy poverty history uh but i do you think with uh, if you look at the scorecard of the continent's energy uh, industry so far this year do you think we've made some we've scratched the surface do you think we've made a very good showing so far for the year just a few weeks down to the end of the uh, current fiscal year I would rate Africa on a B minus. There's been a lot of potential, but we still have a lot to do. Sign, baby, sign. There's a lot of deals stuck in the hands of bureaucrats that are not moving. We need to sign that. We've made progress across the continent on getting more investor appetite and drawing investors. But bureaucrats have to live up to their job. You know, it shouldn't take so long to, to, uh, to approve a deal and the time you need to build that project. But we also have to see that how we drive incentives, we drive no kind of tax and cut down on taxes and don't burden exploration and don't burden gas development, even LPG going in to deal with clean cooking. So I think we need to move fast. We need to have a fierce urgency of now to really drive this up so that our young people, women, can progress. We are on a B minus, but that shouldn't stop you. Remember, we used to be on an F. So we've done some progress to get on a B minus. My job is to take everybody moving so we got to an A. Africans deserve nothing but an A when it comes to energy because we are not second class or substandard. We deserve something as beautiful as the people that live in this continent. So we got news this afternoon to sum it up, Ayuk, that the board of the APP, or the African Petroleum Producers Organization, just announced some decisions that is meeting in Cotonou on Thursday last week towards the setting up of the Africa's Energy Bank. Do you think, how much do you know, do you think we're making progress on that front as well? Person, you always like to get secrets ahead of time, <laughs> but I'll tell you this, that African Energy Bank is, is coming. The, the, the agreements that had to come through the states is happening. We got to give credit to Farouk Ibrahim and Dr. Arama for really, really staying steadfast in this, in, on this issue and driving this forward. We're going to have an energy bank. That bank is going to deal with energy transition, it's going to deal with energy transformation, but it's not going to have restrictions that says that if you are going to use fossil fuels that has really driven human flourishing and really driven human civilization, we're going to ban that. No, there's going to be pragmatism, there's going to be common sense. Yes, what you're going to have. The states are going to embark this. AfriExim is going to work with them to raise the financing, feasibility studies, business plans have been put in place. Very soon, we are going to see African potential religion itself. But that shouldn't stop us from really seeking out financing and getting a lot of projects done. We shouldn't rest on our laurels. We should go out there. I don't care where you go, Europe, US, China, Russia, Asia, get money into this continent because we still have to deal with 600 million people, the forgotten silent majority that don't have electricity. We need to drive that and Apple is playing a great part. God bless you, Dr. Farouk and all the good people at AfriExit. We need to support them. Well, well, thank you so much, and we appreciate what they're putting together towards the setting up of that African energy plan. We got the news late this afternoon. Thank you so much, NJ Ayuk. We wish you all the best and get a great evening, the head of African Energy Chamber in South Africa. Thank you so much.